Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Sean Barrett. I'm the pastor here. Good to have you all here this morning. Uh, Welcome also to our people watching online this morning. Hope you're able to join us in person. We have a wonderful morning planned. We have nine new people joining us here at Nativity this morning, so super excited about that. There's just, there's nothing that's going to happen today that's going to ruin my morning. Uh, We also have uh, between five and eight that will hopefully be joining next week. So those are all wonderful blessings that we're experiencing here at Nativity. I do ask you this morning, if you are a visitor, to please fill out one of these cards so we can stay in touch with you. And then I want to highlight our uh, youth retreat that was detoured and then detoured again. We're we're just embracing the detour at this point. Uh, So we were going to Chicago for the youth gathering that got canceled. Then we thought, no problem, we'll do a beach retreat. Couldn't work that out. So we are going to be in the Smoky Mountains. We have rented a three-story cabin, and this is open for any student who this summer will be entering the seventh grade on up. And there, uh, we have packets that I'll be handing out tonight at our youth activity. If you would like one of these, you're not going to be there, please let me know and I can get you one. Uh, but the cost on this is $300. There's $50 non-refundable deposit when you register. The nice thing about it being $300 is our students who are registered for the youth gathering are getting a refund of $350. So you can go on the retreat and still keep 50 bucks, mom and dad. So <laughs> it's a win-win. So we are really looking forward to this. Uh, the adult chaperones are going to be Mark and Michelle Grush and myself and my wife, April. So we are thrilled to be putting this together. We are limiting this to 16, so you will want to get registered sooner rather than later for that event. Well, I don't have any more announcements this morning, so let's prepare our hearts for worship with the music of the prelude. I invite you to stand for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. 
Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and I invite our new members to come forward at this time. Okay, and we'll just have you lined up here. Wonderful. Uh, Harriet has been visiting here for 20 years now. So you want to make sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I have um, given them all a heads up on this, but I'm going to be sharing the mic with them, and I've invited them if they would like to uh, not only share their name, but what brought them to Nativity to do that, and we'll just pass the mic down, and that way people here can get to know some of you a little bit. And uh, I want to remind you, if you are speaking, you are free to take down your mask while you're speaking. It bored. Uh, my Anna brought me here 20 years ago and moved to Asheville. I'm very happy to finally be joining the church since I am now a permanent resident of North Carolina. My name's Heather Paffer. Um, I attended here several years ago, um, but had to stop attending. Oh, just hold it a little bit closer. Okay, sorry. I um, attended here several years ago, um, but I had to stop attending because my work schedule changed and I have to work weekends and then COVID happened. Um, 
and then I was able, with my current work schedule, to come back. Um, and I've just always been drawn to the really welcoming community here. Um, I felt welcome as soon as I walked in the doors, and I really appreciated that. My name is Carol Edgar, and uh, we started watching Church Online, and it even felt welcoming then, and um, more so now. And actually, the first Sunday I walked through the doors, um, the pews were covered with quilts. And uh, that was God telling me, you belong here, because in my past church, I ran the quilt organization's Blessings of Faith. Good morning, I'm Terry Edgar. Uh, we moved up here in, in August, no, end of July, from Charlotte. Uh, our we have one daughter that lives up here. We're originally from Buffalo, and like Carol said, it's a very welcoming, welcoming community. I'm Todd Ferdine. We've been coming uh, parts of the year for the last eight, nine years, and uh, picked uh, a Lutheran church because I grew up in the LCA and have been Lutheran all my life. Uh, and like everybody else, we just loved it when we came here. Very welcoming. And, uh... I'm Nancy Fredine. I felt bad saying that we've been here 10 years and it's taken that long to join, but 20 is good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're happy to be here. We've always found it a very welcoming community, so we're looking forward to worship with you more. My name is Dan Polito, and uh, we moved into the area about a year and a half ago, and COVID and all those things kept us away from uh, joining a church, but we attended online off and on, as well as uh, appeared in the pews a few times. And it was back in November, Pastor Sean uh, put out the challenge to get 200 attendees each uh, Sunday. And it just so happened that that was the Sunday that I taken the visitor card and decided I would fill it out. And, and I thought to myself, well, maybe I'll be one of the 200. <laughs> so, so here I am, 200 later or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. My name is Catherine Lanier. And I came here because my father, Joseph, and my uncle, Ed, came to visit Nativity one morning when the sign hadn't been changed yet. <laughs> and the service was at 10 and they showed up at 11. <laughs> but my Uncle Ed was determined that we would be introduced to the Lutheran Church. I come from an Episcopalian background and I'm very glad to be here. I, I have to reiterate what everyone has said. You have been so welcoming to me and my father and I, I just, I'm overwhelmed with how many people have introduced themselves to me and welcomed me into the church. So I stayed for that reason. And I was a lay person in the Episcopal Church and I look forward to perhaps filling that role here. Good morning. Uh, I'm Joseph Lanier. I think uh, my daughters have introduced us and I'm glad to clear up our relationship. We've been coming since October and uh, introduced to uh, individuals around and they know that this is my daughter, not another relationship. <laughs> she may act like the other, but she isn't. Okay, so I came uh, in October as uh, Mary Catherine. I call her Mary Catherine because that's her real name. And uh, she, uh, 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 we, we came, uh, my brother and I, he's visiting me from in Chicago. He's lived in Chicago for many years. Um, and we did come late, so we got here when the service was over. But as we were leaving, several people greeted us and welcomed us even though they noticed we didn't get here all the time. <laughs> uh, invited us to a picnic they were having out somewhere. And I said to my brother, no, uh, they don't even know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't bring anything for the picnic. So we zipped out, but we got the time straight. 
And he, of course, went back to Chicago. And, uh, well, and my daughter uh, started joining me, and we've been fairly regular. And my mother always told me, and I listened to her. She said, when you go to a new place, the first thing you must do is get a chart home. Well, I bought my house down the street here in 1969. And here I am. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we are delighted to welcome you all officially this morning. It is a blessing to us, and I know Nativity will continue to be a blessing to you as well. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these disciples, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. Today we welcome Carol Edgar, Terry Edgar, Nancy Fredeen, Todd Fredeen, Catherine Lanier, Joseph Lanier, Heather Peffer, and Dan Polito as they join as disciples and Harriet Ward as we gather together here at Lutheran Church of the Nativity. I invite the congregation to stand. We are gathered by God into one church through Christ. Together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, let us confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of baptism among God's people in this place? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. What a great way to start the morning. Fantastic. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see a power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that your Lord God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the Lord of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toll, toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this new place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. And then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit 
into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during all those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they shall bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite the children up for children's word time. Do we have any children? I saw Evelyn earlier. Oh, she's (laughs) right. That happens all the time when people hear I'm preaching. They just make for the back door. There's Evelyn. Come on in. You, you almost missed children's word time. You believe that? Well, I'm going to show you a quilt. This is from my, my youngest child, who is now 17 years old. And she had this quilt made for her when she was just a little baby, and what is, what is that shape? That's a heart. A heart, yes. And do you have a special blanket like this? No. No? I just have a Okay. Do you like that blanket? Do, do you usually carry it with you, keep you feeling safe? Uh, I keep it in bed. You keep it in your bed? Okay, so keep you warm, right? What is, what's, a, what's a heart mean? What does that mean? Like, if you see a heart, what do you think of? Like, maybe love? Yeah. yeah. So, this was made for her, and it was made by her great, great aunt. Who, and this was made, and it's a comfort for her, because even in she was in kind of tough times, she could always remember that her great aunt had made this for her and put a heart on there to represent that she loved her, and she didn't have to be as scared. And this morning, we hear about Jesus, and he's not having a great time. He's out in the wilderness, and he's having a really tough time in his life. But he gets through all that, and because he can get through all that and knows what we experience when we have those dark times in our life, we know that he will never be afraid. He can always be with us. So when you're having a bad time in life, or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and you're a little bit frightened that it's still dark out, you know that Jesus is always with you. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for for never leaving us. Thank you for loving us. us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And Miss Jenny's back there for children's word time, and you get to carry the cross out. You want to do that? Okay. There we are. You all set? Okay. (laughs) 
So I was doing something a couple of weeks ago that was unheard of just five years ago, and that was I was on a Zoom meeting with friends and colleagues, and so we had a, a Methodist pastor. She is up in Ohio, a Presbyterian pastor out in Oregon, and a Southern Baptist chaplain up in Virginia. And we got to talking about our world today and all the challenges, the, the constant upheaval, and why can't it be simpler? Why does it always have to be so difficult? And one of my friends said, why can't we go back to the 1980s? <laughs> I understood the 1980s. Things made sense to me back then. And then as we talked further, we realized that the 1980s were not the perfect time in human history. We were dealing with this newly discovered disease called AIDS and all the stigma that went along with that. Huge economic inequality, not only in our country, but around the world. And the constant threat of global thermal nuclear war. In an instant, everything we knew and loved could be dissolved in fires of temperatures beyond what we could possibly comprehend. As we peel back the veneer of nostalgia, we began to see that there is no perfect time in human history. Every time has its own challenges. And we see that this morning as we see the temptation of Jesus. The temptations may change, the names may change, but there's never been an easy time to be a child of God in this world. Now, Jesus, of course, the devil comes to him. He's been in this wilderness for 40 days, and 40 days may not seem like a lot, but remember, this is 40 days of temptation. That's a long time. First temptation, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. After 40 days of fasting, you can imagine how good a nice loaf of bread would taste in that moment. And Jesus responds, one does not live by bread alone. Next temptation, the devil takes Jesus up to see all the nations of the world. And all of these have been given to the devil and he is free to give to whomever he chooses. Now when I used to read this, I thought that it was a temptation for Jesus to actually get into direct worshiping of the devil. But as I read this further, I believe this is an indictment of how our, how our world powers work. People who are in positions of power generally got there through political maneuvers, intrigue, power plays. This is not the way of Jesus, and Jesus refuses to participate. For the final temptation, Jesus is taken to the pinnacle of the temple. Throw yourself down! After all, there's at least two places in the Bible that said you won't get hurt. What a shortcut this would be for Jesus. To become a spectacle. To just throw himself down. And in an instant, the people would know his identity. Who he was. So much easier than the cross, so much easier than the suffering that would bring. And instead, Jesus says, do not test the Lord your God. And the devil goes away for a more opportune time. Now, Jesus goes through these trials by himself. And he passes. I mean, it shouldn't be a huge surprise. He is a son of God, after all. But you and I are also going to have times in our life that are filled with trials, with temptations. And as we go through those times alone, it only makes our difficult times more difficult. We have been given to each other as gifts, and we are given each other to receive as gifts. We need each other. Now, we have a Lenten theme this year, 
It was gone out via snail mail and email. It's three words. Can anyone tell me what the Lenten theme is? Thank you. I'm so glad. <laughs> I was thinking of all the time and effort, and no one would know about it. Yes, some assembly required. And I'm sure nearly all of us have been in that situation where those three little words changed our plans. Some assembly required. Staying up late past the kid's bedtime because someone's got to get this work done. Maybe losing some time that we had scheduled for other things because some assembly required. Some assembly required always brings work. It always brings effort. It always brings a time commitment that we may or may not have planned on. But I have never regretted some assembly required. Because whenever some assembly required shows up, I know that the next day, even though the people receiving those gifts may have no idea of the effort and time that went into it, I'm going to see those smiles on their faces. And in that moment, they will realize how much they are loved. Some assembly required is always worth it. I brought with me uh, three quilts. I showed Evelyn one, but I have three quilts this morning. These represent a much higher level of skill than I possess. These are handmade quilts by my great aunt. And she died three months ago. She was 96 years old. And this was just her habit. Whenever she heard about a new baby being born or a new child being adopted, she would take time and make a quilt. Now, a quilt is not something that's just put together in 15 or 20 minutes one evening or even an hour. It takes time and persistence, the intricate work that's involved. And so the first quilt I'm going to share with you is actually the newest one. This one is only 17 years old. I say only to make myself feel younger. <laughs> but you got, this is from my youngest, Addie. And you've got the hearts on there, which I share, showed Evelyn. But you've also, if you look very closely, and you're welcome to come up afterwards, there are little pink ducks on here. And Addie grew up with an obsession for ducks. To this day, she has a duck collection. She's got a collection of rubber ducks. And we never could point, pinpoint exactly where that originated until this week. And we looked at her quilt and she pointed out, I wonder if those ducks is where that came from. <laughs> could be. And to be honest, I never even noticed those ducks until this week because when she was using this blanket regularly, I was usually too busy to worry about the ducks being on there. But my great aunt had no idea of the ways that she was influencing my youngest just by putting the ducks on there. And as Addie reflects on this quilt, even to this day, of course she loves the ducks, but she also reflects back on her love for her aunt and her aunt's love for her. Her life was touched in ways by this that my aunt could never have anticipated. The second quilt is from my son, Ian. This one's a little bit older. This one's 24. And again, with the hearts to, to show the love. And this one really illustrates well, I think, part of the reason we are pushing some assembly required. And we have set a goal to have 200 in worship. Because if you look at these hearts, they are all different colors. They are different patterns. There are no two hearts on here that are identical. And that's also what gives the beauty, isn't it? As we have more and more disciples of Jesus gather here, we are made more beautiful as a congregation. We get to experience a wider variety of backgrounds, of life experiences, of spiritual gifts that are brought here to share. And for Ian, this represents his aunt's love for him. 
as we bring people here, we share the love of God as we experience it and as we share it with one another. And the final quilt is also the oldest. This one is 27 years old now. It's getting a little bit on the older side for a quilt. This is my oldest child, Brittany, and I am under strict orders since she found out I was bringing this to Arden to bring it back in one piece. <laughs> she still has an attachment to this. Many times we think of quilts as uh, in similar way that we might think of a congregation. We might think of a quilt as only having one purpose, to keep you warm when it's cold. We may be tempted to think of a congregation as only having one purpose, gather together for Sunday and go back home for the week. But the truth is there are many more levels than that. This quilt represents much more than warmth. How do I know that? Because this quilt has a name. Quilts that are just kept for warmth, they don't have names. If you can see the picture on there, the name will make sense. This quilt's name is Lammy Sheepy. <laughs> you can make sure and ask 27-year-old Brittany next time you see her. This has had that name for 25 years, since she was two years old. And so for Brittany, this became her constant companion not just when she slept, but in the car, when she was on a walk, when we went to see family at holidays. For her, this always was a reminder of that security and that love. More so than the warmth. It was about who made this quilt for her, how it was made, all that that represented. As we continue to push on some assembly required, as we continue to work in this effort together, we are united as we experience this love. You know, the Bible never once says that the walk of discipleship is easy. We are never promised that. In fact, we're promised quite the opposite. This morning we hear about Jesus in the wilderness. He is out there alone. We don't need to do this alone. We are called to love God and love our neighbor because we need God. We need our neighbor. We are in this together. As you carry those burdens, those burdens become lighter as your other disciples help you carry those. As you see others carrying burdens, we share in the work of God as we help to lighten those burdens. We are in this together. This morning, we got to welcome nine new people here to the Nativity. Wonderful. And I'm looking forward to another group next Sunday. Just marvelous. We are called to this work of some assembly required. We have a whole world to announce this to, a whole world to share this good news, to continue to bring people to share the word, share the sacraments, to share the burden, to realize that none of us are in this alone. We are being assembled together by God. God is blessing us with growth, and God is thrilled that we are connecting with each other as we worship and as we serve each week. Go forth knowing that you have been called into this blessed work, that some assembly is required. And yes, it's not always easy. It's not an always a simple path, but it is blessed. And we gain strength from each other as we serve one another, as we love one another, and as we focus our hearts on Jesus in this journey. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also Let us share the peace with each other.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast, where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Dwell among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the celebration and share the meal of the baptized. All are welcome. Please be seated. The body of Christ given for you.
Anybody just stand for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body and blood. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God. You have been filled with grace and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.